use a variety in our classroom. Um, one of the most important that I feel that we use in our classroom is pictures, um, whether it be actual pictures or picture symbols. Um, we use it for our calendar. I help use it to help lay out um, plans for like washing hands, the process of the washing hands, the process of going to the bathroom for children that have problems understanding what comes next in that process. I also use visuals to help them know the next activity that's coming up or whether we're almost done with something like so just giving them the warning with those visuals of what's going to come next that helps the children like look at and process and anticipate what is coming next in their day. We also have some high-tech um, equipment that we use in our classroom. We currently have a child that uses a Toby Dynabox, um, which lets them interact either by pointing to pictures on it or using an eye gaze device. So it's a, it's a much higher tech communication device and they can turn through pages and use that communication tool. So there are a lot of different options um, for technology, um, specifically um, the ones, the students that I work with, a lot of times they'll have a communication device that can be low tech, where it can be a single button um, that help the child communicate and can be just, it can be as low as just a cause and effect toy, you know, learn it for, the, for a child to learn. If I push this button, it's gonna make this noise or play this music. Um, so that can be a, a good technology. Um, a lot of times I work with that during different gross motor skills. I might introduce a cause and effect toy that they're engaging with. Um, and it can be as high tech as a high tech communication device. And so for me as a physical therapist, I might help a child, I might come in and help a child with positioning and get them in the right position to help them be as successful as they can with that high tech device. Because sometimes the high tech device requires their trunk to be stable and their head to be stable enough to be able to be successful with those devices. Yeah, so we use, obviously we use pictures. Um, we use um, Big Macs, simple switches that are just one word or two words. Um, we also use um, communication devices. Um, they can be complex. They can have 16 pictures on them or they can just have two pictures on them. Um, we also use homemade things that work for children. Um, sometimes it's pictures on a strip of laminated paper. Um, so whatever, whatever works for that child is what the teacher is responsible for figuring that out and sort of putting it into play. Um, and it's so interesting because every child learns differently. So you never know um, what is going to be required. But I think what you don't want to have happen is your technology to be set up but not be functional in the classroom. It's very important that all that assistive technology is functional. Because um, again, we don't want to frustrate children or we don't want to slow down their interaction and their participation because we're waiting for a screen to pop up or we're waiting for something to turn on or there's so many choices that they're not able to keep up with their peers. You know, the idea is that they're included in the activity and they're able to use that technology to enhance their experience. And we just want to make sure it doesn't um, slow us down. So there are many means. Um, when we're talking about high tech, that might be something, a Big Mac communicator, which is just a, you know, a one push button. It may be a high tech device that's even more high tech, where it's a communication device where the child is, you know, using their fingers to communicate with us, um, or it's a, it's a verbal output device. Um, and there's also eye gaze communication devices where a child maybe that has motor issues cannot physically activate something, but they can use their eyes to activate. So that is, those are just some examples of things that we have in our center that are high tech devices. Low tech devices are just things that you would naturally do in the classroom. Um, a visual schedule is an example of something that we do as a low tech advice, um, device because all of the children 
no matter, you know, if they are traditional learners or if they have needs in certain areas, they go to that visual schedule. And that is something that is just natural. It helps them to know what is coming up next. I think just in general, making accommodations in the classroom, whether it is a specific chair for a child um, that helps them to be a little bit more comfortable, I would consider that a low-tech um, device. Uh, visuals um, that we use in the classroom are helpful um, as far as maybe the child putting things back in a certain spot. If you have a picture of what, you know, that that bin is for, say the zoo animals, you have a picture, then that helps all of our kiddos to know where to put things back and therefore it helps your day to run a little bit smoother. So those are just some examples of low tech that we use in the classroom. So this year I don't have a ton of assistive technology in my classroom, um, but we do have some picture schedules that help the children to, specific children to function throughout the day to know what to expect next. Um, and then I have in the past had a Big Mac device used in my classroom. And so that was getting that child to then engage in um, expressive communication. So we were able to then set that Big Mac to be a response. So if we were going around circle and each child was saying their name, I could then record myself saying that child's name. And then when it got to her turn, she would be able to then press the button and say her name like everyone else.